The day my enemies convinced me to remove my armor, I left myself vulnerable for a spiritual slaughter, and I willingly accepted to follow role models other than the Prophet's daughters, and I realized I wanted to resemble those who are cover girls because I was ashamed to remain a covered girl. I let the world take me for a spin, and I naively told myself this covering does not define my relationship with him, that God can see the pure heart I have within, and these so-called religious people make me feel guilty that I'm committing sins, but I don't think God is not going to be pleased with me just because I show a little skin, and the more I told myself this, the more it began to sink in, and I had forgotten the reason I wrapped my hair to the chin, but as I laid asleep that night, my mother came to respark the flame that was blown out by this society these polluted winds. In another world I stood as my face was hit with wind. I saw flags and bands of men dressed in red, armed with swords, these hordes, I counted, appeared between twenty to thirty thousand. I was alone. Running around I saw tents in the nearby distance, so I sprinted. As I saw a man dressed in green and a woman dressed in black, I tried to approach them, but in that moment I felt chills down my back, and goosebumps would stab when I realized I was there with no hijab. I had made the decision to take it off. It wasn't me. I couldn't be the person I felt. It was beyond my level. They pressured me. They used hijab as a shovel to bury me alive, to put me underneath the dirt. They deprived me of dressing up, going to proms and skirts, summer days under the sun and short sleeve shirts, falling in love like the movies go. They wanted me to wear long clothes, so thick, no lipstick, no makeup. I wanted to have fun, can't you see? Just like all the girls, these thoughts in front of me like a swarm of birds would fly. And all the pent-up anger and frustration from my family and phony religious people I had still left inside. But when I looked at that woman and her brother, I've never felt more deprived. I screamed to him, Ya Hussein, but he couldn't hear me as his sister kissed him farewell. And he mounted his horse full force as his stallion pounded the sands, dust flying between his hands and his sword as he approached the enemy horde. God is great, he cried to his lord, as they struck him with steel until one of the enemies would kneel on his chest. I couldn't bear to watch the rest as I screamed and squealed, Ya Hussein, allow me to be your shield. I sprinted like I never knew I could as I got closer to the granddaughter of prophethood. But they got to her first, the army of Yazid the cursed, and I heard Imam Zain al-Abidin yell the worst of this tragedy was not the thirst, was not the death, was not the blood, was not the heat of the sun. It was when the women were stripped of their sacred veils in front of everyone. When I saw them touch the hijab of Zainab, it was like they struck and killed me. And that's when I realized I had allowed my enemies to do this to me willingly. 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 They easily defeated me. How can I say that God is pleased with me if the greatest tragedy in history was turned by Zainab through her hijab into victory? But to me, saying my intentions alone are enough seems only contradictory. Fatima and Zainab knew that their power was in modesty because God knew that objectification would make my body into property. So he made hijab a shield so that women would be treated properly. I am beautiful, and like all beautiful things, God doesn't want me to become used and abused like all these women in movies and TV shows. Want me to become used and abused like all these women in movies and TV shows. It was no surprise when mainstream retailers began cashing in on the trend, even launching Eid and Ramadan collections specifically targeted to Muslims. For he even created thorns to protect the rose, and for me, he gave me these clothes. But it seems that without my hijab, I have left myself exposed. I had lowered the flag that I used to wave proudly, and I surrendered. And I have forgotten that God gave the banner of Islam to be waved by my gender. 
Ashamed to look at Zainab, I quickly covered myself with my tears. As I steered, looking for the flag of Abbas, I quickly wrapped, covering myself. I felt God's power yet again enter my grasps, Zainab's hands. I grasped, I kissed, I clenched my fist, laced with Hussein's love and Abbas's flag, my new hijab. As I ran towards the enemies, I took my stand. No longer will I leave myself exposed, and my new armor became fused upon my flag and bonded within my soul until eternally it became sown as we appeared in Sham I stood holding Zainab's hand as she shook Yazid from his throne I awoke entered my closet and re-equipped my armor stronger never again will I look like anyone except the Prophet's daughter